The entire Bible is completely filled with stories of people that should not have survived particular fights or should not have survived particular situations, but yet they did. And they did it for a simple reason, because there were some biblical principles being applied to them, specifically how God cares for his own. So this video is going to take a look at a pretty interesting question on how to win the fight based on biblical principles. Now there's a lot of great fights in the Bible where people should not have survived, but yet they did. But there's one particularly that I've just thought a lot about over the years, and it means a lot to me for some personal reasons as well. And this is the story of David and Goliath. And we're going to just kind of take a look at this and see how is it he pulled off what he pulled off. And then we're going to apply this to ourselves in recent times. Starting in 1 Samuel 17, 22, what's going on here is the Israelis are up against a pretty good battlefront of the Philistines, and they have their champion calling them out, Goliath. When David had heard of this, it says in 22, And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words, so David heard them. And it goes on in 26, Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now something very important has just happened. What has happened is David has heard somebody cursing them by false gods and he is wondering who is this that would go up against the living God because he recognizes that if you have God on your side there's all sorts of benefits to that. More so he knows that he is a child of God and that he could conquer anybody, regardless of his size or stature. Especially against people doing things that are anti-God, like violence. And it goes on in 31. And when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, for your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. And your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God." I want to make an important note on how much God loves David's heart. From the moment he was born, from the moment he knew him in the womb, he always knew David's heart. And David realized that he knew that there is something to this lamb. He knew that there was something that he had to save, that he had to lay down his own life for a spotless lamb. And that's kind of what you and I are to do. And as we do that in our daily walk, God observes everything and he sees all these things goes on in 37. Moreover, David said, The Lord will deliver me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with the coat of mail. And David fastened his sword to his armor, and he tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Now, something peculiar has happened here. David is, of course, very confident, but he's not that confident that he's going to go out with weapons he has not tested. And I think there's an important note to be very good with your weapon because I'm 100% certain when David goes back and he looks at the times that he delivered the lamb from the lion or the bear, that every time in there he probably had a sling involved and he was very good with that weapon. That was his weapon for protecting the flock. So whether or not you're like a sheepdog and you're protecting the flock, or whether or not you're like a sheepdog and you're protecting your family, or whether or not you're just smart enough to protect yourself, you need to keep in mind that you need to approach this that you need to learn your weapon. If you don't go out and practice regularly with the weapon that you carry the most, 
then you're really just going off with armor and swords that you've not tested. And it goes on in 40 and says, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag and he drew near the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That's why David won. It was really quite simple. He had three main things going for him. Number one, he had laid down his own life for God and was willing to do it anytime, any day, just like Jesus did. Number two, he knew his weapon. He specifically was well trained in his weapon. And I guarantee the king's armor was the best armor money can buy in that day. And he didn't even want it. He chose a simple sling and a rock. And then he cut Goliath's head off with his own sword. He didn't even have a pocket knife on him. But the most important thing he did was he believed in God. He knew that if God wanted to take him, he could take him any day, any time. David or you could be surrounded by tanks guarding you and walls and thousands and thousands of armed guards. And you could have the best doctors and the best scientists revolving around your everyday care. And if God wants to take you, he's going to take you. More so, you can be in a furnace or a lion den. And if God wants to save you, he's going to save you. So it's really not up to you or not whether you're going to win the fight. You need to be ready to win the fight, but you definitely want God on your side. You definitely want to be smart about your weapon. And there's one other benefit that I believe there is in here. Long ago, when I first kind of started thinking about it this way, I was at an airsoft training course where there was many of us church members and some school-related people that were going around essentially a school and having face-to-face -face combat, one-on-one, one-on-two, one-on-three, three-on-three, that sort of thing, combat with a handgun. But we were using airsoft. And honestly, the rules change whenever the gun turns around and is pointed at you. So the idea is here is that you need to go in it confident with your weapon, confident in your abilities. More so, you need to go in it with a state of knowing that the living God is on your side. Now, when I went through this, I can't be lying and say I wasn't a little bit afraid. I knew they were airsoft, but I was still a little intimidated when that gun turns around and people are trying to shoot at you. But I found myself kind of saying things similar to what David said. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because you know what? God takes you to greener grasses. He takes you by brooks and he takes you to places that are peaceful in your life. All you got to do is make it through that fight when the devil comes up against you and sinful and evil, violent people come up against you. Just simply know that God's got your back. When I started doing this, what I realized was that everything kind of slowed down. All of a sudden, instead of shooting 50 shots to hit a couple people, I was shooting one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots. I was trying to kill each person with one shot, and I, I was very successful at it. While everybody else on the course is just blasting away and running out of ammo, I was just trying to just hit them with the one shot I had. More so, I wasn't hitting people behind me. I just was like laser focused on it. I think better than most. And I think it's when you know that God's on your side, everything slows down. If you've ever been in a violent encounter of any kind, you know everything just kind of goes white. You just, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're doing. You need that to slow down and you need that to be in your benefit. So knowing that God is on your side absolutely puts you in a better state of mind. But the most important thing is if he's going to save you, he's going to save you. You need him on your side. And really what I'm getting at is you need to know, just like David knew, that you are a child of the living God. 
And there's only one way to do it. It's to know that you need to lay down your life for the lamb, just like the lamb laid down his life freely. God freely laid down his life for you. And when you realize that and you become an adopted child of the living God, you can go up against Goliath just like David did, knowing, especially if they're cursing God, especially if they're violent people, when God has you, he has you. If he's going to take you, he's going to take you. If he's going to keep you, he's going to keep you. And there is nothing you can do about it. So there you go. I hope this video helped you a little bit. It's something that I've just thought about a lot over the last several years, and I hope it helps some people out there. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. You can also now find us at GodFamilyAndGuns.org and GodFamilyAndGuns at Facebook. But by far the most important part of this YouTube channel is it is a ministry to us and we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.